see temperatures fall, say, by 5, 4, 5 p.m. into the lower 50s. 50% 50 coverage of light rain. It's going to be windy and chilly. Could see gusts to 25 miles an hour. So gumbo warning day. For uh, Halloween, looking at maybe a slight chance of showers in the morning and then sun in the afternoon. Still going to be chilly, no doubt about that. And for your Halloween forecast, looking dry, mostly clear, with temperatures dropping into the lower 50s. Then wake up towards Wednesday morning, and we could see wind chills near freezing. High temperatures under sunny skies to 62. By Thursday morning, we'll likely see lows near freezing in the lakes to the mid-30s in the triangle. We'll warm up to 65. Then as we head towards late next week, we'll begin an anemic, easy for me to say, a slow warming trend. And uh, could be back into the 70s by Friday. And don't forget to fall back one hour. Next weekend is the longest weekend of the year by one hour. It's also the best weekend of the year because it's an hour longer. Otherwise, <laughs> we're back up to near 80 by Monday a week. I feel like you said it best. We are going to be experiencing oh, that that's how we go. We're not weather. we're not far enough north and we're not far enough south. We're just it's right just in back and forth. I mean, it's one place to another, up and down. You know, if we lived up in say Nebraska, mm -hmm. and stay cold all winter, but we're not. And if we were in South Texas, you may stay mild all winter. But we're here in Southeast Texas, and, it's and back that's and where forth. we is. Yeah, <laughs> roller coaster. Thanks for breaking it down for us, Patty. Anytime. Appreciate it. It's my job. Don't go anywhere. The 409 Sports Blitz starts in just two minutes. What? Get pasa? We're gonna find out. Get pa get get pasta. Dude, so queso. tell me the hey, queso. tell me about the food. How do we are we standing in the right spots? Yeah, are we standing in the right spots? No! I don't know what's going on. Uh Live from the 409 MCT Credit Union presents the 409 Sports Blitz on 12 News. All right, welcome to week 10 of the high school football season. Nick Canales alongside Brandon Roddy. Hey, this date has been circled for a long time by a lot of people in Mid-County since the schedules were released a long time ago, the 100th edition of Mid-County Madness. Yeah, that's a lot of football. This rivalry dates back to 1925. Nederland has dominated this century, winning 15 out of 23 games. Yeah, could PNG stay undefeated in district play or would Nederland move into first place tie? There's head coach Wade Phillips on hand doing the ceremonial coin toss. There is the Bum Phillips Trophy, close to 13,000 in attendance at Bulldog Stadium. Wow. Indians get off to a hot start. Chase Johnson takes a direct snap. He scores a touchdown. PNG on top, 7-0. PNG gets the ball back. 
driving, trying to go up two scores, but it's a fumble. Oh, it's a fumble. Needle recovers at the three yard line. Actually, Bulldogs would throw an interception. PNG would go back down the field. They would kick a field goal to start the second quarter, go up 10 0. Here come the dogs, though. Aiden Sunday finds KJ uh -oh. Tazino. He is going to outrun everybody for the touchdown, but wait! A flag on the field holding on Nederland. Uh, wave off that score. Indians would take over. Drive down the field. Connor Bailey would punch it in. 17 0 wow. PNG. So, Brandon, mm -hmm. last play of the first half. Hubert Thomas taking the handoff. Look at him. Oh, look at him. Oh, Dude, look this at kid's a stud. Wow. This kid is an absolute <laughs> stud. He's gone. Indians led 20 Jeez. to 9 at the half, and this game got out of control in a hurry. Nice. The Bum Phillips Trophy staying at PNG as the Indians win, and they win big tonight. 41 16, your final. Indians improved to 6 0 in district play. Bulldogs dropped to 4 2. All right. Let's go out to Holton Pepper, who is live at Bulldog Stadium. But Holton, this game was still pretty close in the first half. It got ugly late. What happened in the second half to put the game out of reach? Just an unbelievable showcase of emotions from both sides on this field. But in the second half, like you said, Brandon, this, this thing got out of hand really, really fast. And it just seemed like that Nederland couldn't catch up with the offensive just speed and power of PNG. They were running all over the field. Dysons, they were throwing the ball. They were running the ball. It was just too much for them to handle. And I just, for here, just thinking about this game and thinking about this rivalry, I mean, obviously you want to see a good game, but for PNG, this is a statement win. They did really, really well in controlling the time of possession, going down the field, punching it in, taking care of the football. They didn't have, now, of course, there were a couple situations where they could have had more points based on a couple drops and not finishing drives. But this is a PNG team that coach, I heard say that they're not finishing drives and this is 41 points we're talking about. PNG is a dangerous football team and now they stay on top of the district and hope to be district, sole district champions coming in next week. So there's a lot to look forward to with these teams. And as for Nederland, they're gonna get into playoffs. This is still a dangerous team and they can take care of this thing. And if once they get in, that's the whole point of the playoffs is all you gotta do is get in. But for PNG, this is already a backup sophomore quarterback and he's doing stuff like this. This is a really good PNG football team, guys. Oh, no doubt about that. I mean, we saw them, uh, saw them out there earlier today and, and uh, they look dominating. And uh, like you mentioned, Eagles going to be in the postseason. They're a dangerous team, but uh, Indians right now, uh, five and well, six and oh in district play. Yep. Looks like uh, the district championship well within reach. Yeah, they look strong tonight, too. It's be good stuff. We got other scores for you as well over in District 8 5 a wow. Division One, where number four Port Arthur Memorial was in a dogfight against Barbers Hill. Titans were down 24 10 at halftime, and they were trying to secure a district title if they could collect the W Ooh. tonight. It looks like that is not going to happen. Barbers Hill leading, winning that one 52 to 23. Sheesh. Yeah, undefeated season no longer for the Titans, though. But, hey, they'll be a dangerous team in the playoffs. Let's go out to LCM. The Bears hey, played host to Lumberton and what would basically decide the District 10 for a district championship. Mason Floyd to Keegan Cockerham, Ooh. but no dice right there incomplete. So, Jaden Ward whew, to Lumberton right in the LCM territory. <laughs> and then Lucas Powell throws to Trey Kirsch. Gets Lumberton on the board with that touchdown out running the secondary 7-0. Raiders. Then Powell goes back to work, scrambles, finds a wide open window. Oh, oh Jukin jiving. Look at him. Oh, gets taken out right there out of bounds by the LCM. Raiders actually led 17 nothing at the half right now, late in the fourth quarter as the Raiders leading 24 seven. So it looks like they will go on and possibly win themselves a district championship. Yeah, some good stuff right there. And out in 4A Region 3 District 10, the Vider Pirates went up early on the Hargrave Falcons and have uh, led that entire game. That one's sitting at 28-21 right now. Looks like there's still time left to play. The game's not over. Uh, wait a minute. Uh-oh, we a got minute. some live oh, score in there. It looks like it is starting to get out of hand. 42-28 Vita right now uh, in the fourth quarter. So that one could be winding down. All right, let's go out to District 9 for a Division 2. Sealsby Tigers have scored 35 points or more in every game but one this season. Tonight, they travel to face off a Bridge City team that needs, they actually needs a win out in mm. order to get help to make the playoffs. Yeah. All right, Michael Mosier to Ashton Cartwright. Touchdown, Tigers. Then, 
Silsby would get the ball back after a punt. Look at this guy. Takes a handoff. Who like shot out of a cannon? Of speed. Yeah, speed kills right there. Touchdown, Trey Kibbles. It's 14 zip. And then the Tigers. Well, here we go again. Back on offense. Back to pass. But guess what? It is picked Ooh. off by Ethan Hernandez going the other way. So Bridge City, they got the ball. They're trying to do something here. Their quarterback back to pass looking. Wow. Oh, that defense. Did you see that swim move? Yes, Pablo wow. Lorenzi gets the sack. And then back to pass, going deep, wide open. Look at the interception by Radrian Baltrip. Seals be going back the other way. They're such a dangerous team right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. They would have to actually uh, punt. Bridge City would get the ball back. This is Hutch Bearden to Gavin Bowden for the touchdown. So Bridge City trying wow. to make a game of this here. Yeah. But back come the Tigers. Michael Mosier. Screen pass to Redrian Baltrip. Oh, oh dead leg. <laughs> nasty move. Oh, he Looking hit like Randy twice. Moss. Down the sidelines. It's 33-7 seals. But right now, just got a text message. A Brit City player has been hurt. Oh, no. uh, they are actually calling a life flight. Uh, they are in the process of possibly uh, going ahead and calling this game. So 33-7. to But right now, uh, our thoughts and prayers are going to be with a Brit City player. Uh, hurt really bad. They're calling a life flight, and uh, they are in the process of calling the game. Uh, so it looks like 33-7 will be the final. Wow, wow. Prayers for him right there. Uh, we continue with the scoreboard. The number eight, Hampshire Finette Longhorns looking to bounce back this week. It came out with malintent for the Liberty Panthers. This one got ugly quick and stayed ugly the whole game. That final there is 49-14. Longhorns take that one over the Panthers. All right, Jasper Bulldogs put up 49 points in the first half. They have never looked back. Late fourth quarter, leading Harden Jefferson 70 to nothing. Oh so goodness. Jasper, when he goes final, they'll improve to four and one district play. Hawks would fall to 0 and five, and Jasper will end the regular season at Sealsby, which carries seeding purposes. Mm -hmm. If Jasper could pull out a huge win next Friday night, 70 points. That's just disrespectful Ooh, right there. That's Jeez, bad. Stop Ooh. it. We have some District 21 6A action as Beaumont United took on Westbrook tonight in the Alumni Bowl. This one wasn't pretty early for the Bruins. It looks like they're, we got the field goal right there to end it. That's mostly, oh, this one here. What mostly, well, we got Timothy Morris Jr. and. Well, we got the band right there. Yeah, Needle Band, band is uh, clapping up a storm. Some celebration. Okay, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, go to our play of the week brought to you by Five Point Credit Union. All right, our play of the week comes from uh, courtesy of East Chambers and the Harden Hornets. KJ Fontenot to Jaden Thibodeau runs about half the field for a touchdown. Wow, turns on the after. How about those East Chambers Buccaneers? And that is your five point credit union play of the week. The band of the week brought to you by Donaldson Auto Group, Silsby. Time for the band of the week. That was the closest battle I've seen since I've been here. Needleland Band is your band of the week. We'll be right back. With those, uh, Lord have mercy. What, 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 what's happening? What? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I sent that in though. That's why I'm trying to see what happened. That was like a. Uh, oh my gosh. PNG flex their muscle tonight as they crush Needham in 41-16. They stay unbeaten in district play at six and zero. There. Leave me in the dark. Okay, 1.30. I don't know. Uh, I heard Band of the Week was going. It was it was rocking. And then it stopped. And then Brandon and Nick were like. Hey, so this is, this is, uh, is this Colton's pre-recorded interview? Okay, okay, just want to make sure, but Jeff Joseph, correct? Do you want me to go read? 
attach that? Okay, they they were talking. They, they they were wondering like. No, ma'am. I just I thought maybe the show something was wrong. Yeah, we're good. Everything's good. Okay, cool. Yeah, so. Uh, Live from the 409 MCT Credit Union presents the 409 Sports Blitz on 12 News. Welcome back. And as you saw at the top of our show, PNG flexed their muscle tonight as they crushed Nederland 41 to 16 and they stay unbeaten in district play at 6 and 0. Yeah, Holton Pepper is at Bulldog Stadium with head coach Jeff Joseph. Holton. Yeah, guys, this was uh, obviously this was a great game, but I got a chance to speak with Coach Jeff Joseph after the game, and he had a lot of high hopes and a lot of great things to say about his big win over rival Nederland here tonight. All righty, thank you, guys. This was an absolutely amazing game, the 100th meeting between these two hated rivals, and it came out in PNG's favor. Coach Jeff Joseph with me here. Appreciate the time for you to talk with us here today. And, Coach, what can you say about the testament with your kids and their preparation this week and coming out here and really putting up a big W and staying on top of district play? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's our preparation this week and it's our preparation through all season and the summer and the work they put in uh, that shows up in games like this. You know, and, and the, way you, the way we try to preach and practice and put yourself in game situations and making practice situations difficult, uh, our kids, you know, they've played in big games and, and they've been in stressful situations and they came out and really competed extremely hard tonight and that's all we could ask, ask of them. God, my board's all over the place. <laughs> it's all good. If you could, if you can name like one point in this game where you thought, man, this is fixing to get ugly. Like we're going to get out here and we're fixing to do some things and we're going to put a lot of points on the scoreboard. I never felt like that, to be honest. Uh, it, was, it was a drive at a time and in a competitive game. You don't know what the heck can happen. And we saw that last year that this game can turn so fast with uh, big momentum swings and we knew we had to keep uh, keep our foot on the gas pedal, keep making drives and, and scoring touchdowns. And then at the end of it, we were able to eat a lot of clock and run the football. All right, you guys are champions of this game once again. Yeah. So what is the game plan after this? What are you all fixing to go celebrate? How are you going to celebrate this win? Hey, well, right now we're at least the district champions, uh, at least the district co-champions. we got one more game to win next week to be the district champions uh, outright for the first time in five years at PNG. So uh, that's, that's what the focus is going to be. we got one more to win, and, and we're getting ready for the playoffs. And uh, you know that you never know what the end of your season is going to be at that point. So uh, it's, it's keep on getting better and keep on improving as a football team, and that's what our focus is going to be. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time. Congratulations on the win, and thank we'll you see so you next time. Yeah. All righty. Thank you, guys. All right. Kirbyville, Orangeville. This is a big game right now for District 10-3A Division I. Kirbyville gets the ball here. You'll see in just a bit. Packed house uh, tonight in, in uh, Wildcat Stadium. This is Trent Jackson getting the kickoff at the 25-yard line. Shakes and bakes. Look at him. Look at him square out right there. Down the sidelines, oh, gets tripped up at the 45-yard line. Great starting field position. Jay Huffman drops back the pass. Uh-oh, he is picked off by Kane Smith of Orangefield. Goes down the sidelines. That is going to lead to this. Bobcats on offense, you know they run that wing tee. Oh, look, they're passing right down. Oh, look at that. Oh, Mahomes to, uh, looks like old Tyreek Hill when he was there. That's Camden Hare, touchdown. And then Kane Smith. Look at this, like a pooch kick right Ooh. here. Taken uh -oh. by Brady uh -oh. uh, right Mahathy. Look at that. Uh-oh. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah. Looking at the band. Reservations right. for six. <laughs> Two-point conversion, no good. So Orangeville led 7-6 at that point. Let's go to the big board here. Uh, late fourth quarter, Kirbyville all over Orangeville, 34-19. to and both Buna and Tarkenton were trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. Cougars and Longhorns came in at one and three in district play, but it looks like they're going to stay alive. All right, let's see what we got here. 
Oh, the old Buna Cougars. A little little swing pass here to the side. Ooh, great effort. Yeah, the old uh, Longhorns with the with the defensive stop there. Uh, Buna, keep marching downfield. You know that offensive line is going to wear that uh, interior defense. You know when you keep running the football, running yeah, the football, just. That's, uh, in the, that's where games won in the trenches. Yeah, you got to watch those big guys up front. All right, goal Ooh. line right here. There it is, right on cue. Halfback dive to the left, touchdown Cougars. And you know this this game was a fight to uh, the for the you know basically the for their playoff lives over right. here. And then uh, we got the old pole in the way, but here come <laughs> <laughs> here comes the Longhorns. You got the sweep right there to your left, and then Tarkenton. What we got here? So the shot of the crowd. How about Ooh, this, though? Buna wow. Cougars come away with the big win, 28-25, your final. That's huge right there. All right, yep. Harden. This is the Harden Hornets and East Chambers Buccaneers. We're taking a good one right here. It looks like here we got number three, K.J. Fontenot. He's going to hand it off number six, Hayden Reeves. He's taking it all the way to the touchdown. That's to the house. And then we have a toss play out here. K.J. Fontenot toss out to Gerald Smith, and he's going to take it all the way to the house. That's big, big speed, big points. Everybody's celebrating. How about those and bucks, man? They're putting up points tonight. And you got to see another handoff with the effort down there, diving into the end zone. Hayden Reeves gets his second touchdown of the day. And there it is, number eight, Javon Watley. He takes the ball up the middle, but it's a fumble. You got to hold on to the football. It's recovered by the Bucks. K.J. Fontenot hands it off here to number four, Jaden Thibodeau. And he's going to run all the way to the house. That's six points. I mean, the speed. The, the the crane kick, you got to celebrate with that. We got to find the offense right here. was clicking, Sheesh. defense was nasty. Thirty-five to nothing. That says it right there. All right, hey, you were at the Beaumont Bowl. Uh, this, this is this is the alumni the bowl. The alumni they call it. bowl. It was the first one I got to check out. It was actually really cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's actually, go. See, do we have those highlights there? Beaumont United taking on Westbrook. Of course, both teams mm -hmm. having rough seasons. Uh, yeah. Westbrook uh, came in. Uh, 0 and 8. Yeah, and we, did, we still got some action for you. You know, Beaumont United taking on Westbrook tonight in the, in the Alumni Bowl. You know, something new for me, but it wasn't early. It wasn't pretty early for the Bruins. And that's mostly because of that man right there, Timothy Morris Jr. He's going to take the toss sweep 27 yards. Ooh, and run. I promise you, you're going to see more from that guy a little bit later. A couple plays later, QB Gilbert Anderson. He's the third. He's rolling left. He's searching. He's searching. He finds Ashton Henry. Who left that man over? And somebody stop him. He takes it all the way to the house for the first points of the game. That makes it 7 nothing T-Wolves. And you know what? Yeah, get excited. You should be excited. But I told you, you would see this man again. Mama, there goes that man, Timothy Morris Jr. He's going to take 35 yards off tackle. This guy was running crazy in the first half. He's going to get another five yards right here. Takes it all the way down to the two and a half yard line. And that is going to set up the field goal. And that's going to make it 10 to nothing. Timberwolves late in the second final right there. 16 nothing. On Beaumont United. The hit of the week brought to you by First Security Bank. All right, hit of the week brought to you part by Brit City's Aiden. The Paler Rollery going to hit the, a massive hit Ooh. on Sylvie's Draylon Miller right there. <laughs> that was nasty right there. Let's take a look at it. Boom! Oh, goodness gracious. Brit City. Boy, tell you what, Sylvie Tigers, they uh, ended up winning this one. On, uh, they ended up rolling and uh, stay undefeated in district play. Pretty impressive. That's good stuff right there. All right, we'll see you back next week. Hey, final week of the regular season. Go football. <laughs>